welcome to forever This is our path of synchrony like leather and feathers No matter the weather we can storm the umbrellas Take a stroll in my heart, let's take this father When I'm beside you baby, see my stakes get better Let me bet it all Destiny vine headers, rosy day emotional description of this love. I am yours, you are mine, the only thing that matters now. We are the Echimus. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Forever Together with the, the Echimus. <laughs> you know what to do like, comment, share, tell a friend to tell a friend that the best couple in the world is back with something <laughs> special. Very special. Yes. So welcome back guys, uh, This in this week's episode we are discussing all things in-laws, uh, this is a very sensitive topic, a topic that most of you should be eager to listen to, and we have a very special guest on the show, Miss Fatuma, she is going to introduce herself, she is an authority, ladies and gentlemen, eh? today if you don't have a notebook, open it she has been married for 43 years 43, 43 years, years you know <laughs> <laughs> so she is the authority on this subject she'll be sharing with us um her journey as a daughter-in-law her journey as a mother-in-law because she's a mother-in-law today mm -hmm. and we can't wait honestly we are so excited i don't know about you baby but i am super excited super excited to learn <laughs> as you can see we are sharing me and my baby mike <laughs> but yeah we are yeah. eager to watch so you are welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, please do introduce yourself to the guests. Do introduce yourself to the viewers. Um. Okay. <laughs> good evening, viewers. Um. A good Fatuma Winfred Wesonga misses, mm -hmm. but I use a good Fatuma, popularly known as Auntie Winnie. Mm -hmm. I have been married for forty-three years, as they've told you. I'm a mother, a grandmother, and of course, a mother in love. We call ourselves in love, not in law. Yeah, <laughs> so she has sure. a very good relationship with her daughter-in-law, Banang. A very beautiful The perfect one. <laughs> <laughs> not <Yeah>. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we are so happy to have you on the show, Mama. Thank you. Um, we just wanted you to share with us, really, your journey. Uh, first of all, uh, you've been married for 43 years. Wow. Yeah? Mm. We all aspire to get there. <laughs> mm. And uh, we are just curious, what was your journey like as a daughter-in-law? Because before we are mothers-in-law, mm. we are really daughters-in-law first. And we just want to know how was it like when you got married? Was it anything what you expected? First of all, you're Fatuma. That means you have, you were a, a, a Muslim, I think. Yes, so we'd love was. to know that story. How was being a daughter-in-law like? Was what you expected, what you found, or oh, it was? <laughs> it was the total opposite. Okay, before I share that, mm. I would like us to know that we are creative beings. Mm. God created us in his image, and whatever we think, whatever we desire, whatever we do, we are creating. Mm. And it's unfortunate that most people don't know that we are creative beings. So we, ended, we end up enjoying the consequences of our doing and we blame other people instead. Mm. Wow, perfect. <laughs> yeah, we are creative. Mm. So, mm. yeah, when I got married, or I come from a Muslim background. And uh, when I was growing up, I had a cousin brother who was a Protestant and he used to treat his wife well. So to me it was like, eh, Protestants treat their wives well. Mm. So, uh, the first Protestant to cross my way, I roped into Have marriage. Have this one. Uh -huh, this one. <laughs> Which year was this? That was 1979. Wow! wow. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when Amin was being <laughs> uh -huh. So. I eloped into marriage, and I'm lucky my parents did take it so badly. They said it's her choice. Mm. And I get there. I got a shock of myself. Mm -hmm. Because the other cousin brother of mine used to go to church every Sunday with his family. Mm. 
the way he treated the the protestant who was a role model uh -huh, who was a role model to me mm. so i get here no going to church on sunday mm. i was shocked and then it was only christmas time that's when we would go yeah. actually not because for me i could not go without him mm. i expected him as a protestant to take to me. lead you yeah. uh -huh. as the head of the family uh -huh. and mm. since he didn't do it he would stay christmas time that's when he would go to church mm. and uh, when i was growing up our culture okay in my culture they had many wives and mm. whenever the daughter-in-law came in it was like she was a slave. Oh, they would have hired a slave. Ah, uh -huh. it was like additional a, labor. Uh -huh. Additional <laughs> labor, but you would be more of a slave because mm. you would do more than your mother-in-law. Mm. So I get here, I marry, ah, uh, and there I was during funerals. I would do the cooking, then the washing up of the things. It was terrible. I would get so tired. I had my, no one could actually help. Everyone left it to you. It was but Now me. that you're here, uh -huh. prove yourself. We are you are the wife. You're the wife. <laughs> <laughs> so the mother in life found in the village, she had the children. So whenever she would put water for preparing the millet bread, she would call someone to come and mingle. So a time came, I'd, I put water also. Then I told her, mommy, can you get someone to mingle? Said, can't you mingo? I told her, no, I can't. Said, but you, you are from our culture. But I had seen from her, she would call someone. Mm. So I told her, for us at our place, we only eat matoki, cassava and sweet potatoes. So I cut off the mingling part of it. Mm. And up to today, I don't even mingle in the village. <laughs> <laughs> you set the precedent from uh -huh. the world. Yeah, <laughs> I said mingling no one. So the work was too much and I didn't like it. I didn't mm. like what I was doing. Mm. But I kept on telling my husband that no woman will ever marry in this home and work the way I'm doing. Oh, mm. yeah. oh. So I kept on telling him mm. ignorantly, I didn't know that we were creative beings. That's why Indeed. I started with the creative thing. Mm. I didn't know that we were creative beings. So, just as I said in the hearing of the Lord, as he says, no woman has married in that home in and home. worked. <laughs> the uh, way you did. Yeah, the way I did. And I thank God so much for that. Mm. Mm. I've seen, um, so, uh, she's a mom in love uh, of a very good friend, uh, Alinda. She's speaks highly of yeah. you. First of all, you guys, their relationship is so Tight. close. You people mm. say mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationships are complicated. Eh? <laughs> but these guys are very close. They love each other. She's, she literally runs to her for everything. She has been mm. so supportive with her kids, with, with even her own relationship. So I, I would like to know, what do you advise the young ladies out there who probably they're not yet even married, and they're like, eh, manangi, this mother-in-law relationship, eh? <laughs> Like, of you go to the marriage and you're mm. not even sure how you're going to hustle it out. Is it a must that it's always a bad relationship? What causes it to be bad? Or what should, how should we approach it? Both, you can advise both the mother-in-law or the daughter-in-law. What would mm. you say? What is the mindset? What should we do to ensure that that relationship is not rocky? So, first and foremost, mm. for those who aspire to get married, they need to deal with their background. Mm. Yeah, background plays a very big role. Mm. Now, just as I've told you, my background, it was like Protestant. Yeah, that is it. Mm. So, you deal with your background. Your personal background. As uh -huh, your right. personal Shame. background as, as an individual. Mm. Your perception of things, the way you see things. Mm. You know, and also, if possible, you learn about the background and culture of where mm. you are going to oh. get married, yes. so that you avoid this culture. What show? Sure. Sure. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, very important. So you learn about the culture. Then another thing you have to know is this mummy's apron string boy. Oh. 
that yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, that one. Mommy's boy syndrome. <laughs> hey, mm. Mommy's apron string boy. That's how I call <laughs> them, you know. Are you getting married to such mm. a man mm. or daddy's girl? Mm. Yes. For me, I was daddy's girl. Mm. And you know, it also poses a challenge. You may not know, but it poses a challenge. Because when I married, I expected my husband to do things the way my father used to do them. Mm. Yeah? Expectation versus reality. Uh -huh. <laughs> because we, we used to work with that. that my dad loved me so much. Mm. We do things together. So when you're a daddy's girl and you marry, you get mm. there, you start doing things, you know, you find out you do this, you do that. The husband will sit back and, Master, be served. and watch you mm. and be served. Mm. So as creative beings, you are going to get there. What are you going to create from the start? Mm. So being daddy's girl, I also created something, a problem for me. Mm. Yeah. So my husband, even up to today, now he has, today he even woke up and did some laundry. Mm. But before he would not. Mm. Yeah, he would do nothing. Because of what I created with my dad would do this. So I would rush, do that, that he would just sit and cheer. Oh, and so watch you, you took over everything. Yeah. Because it was like it I was thought he would join me. Mm. But he didn't. Mm. Then along the way I started complaining, what kind of man is this? Who cannot mm. even touch anything? You know? Even my son at one time said, Hey, but he asked me, Mommy, why don't you send daddy? I told him that uh, he's the head of the family. He mm. kept on asking, because you had so many brothers in law who are going to school there, I would send everyone, but not him. <laughs> but for him, he would just sit and you do everything. Mm. So, being a, a daddy's girl, if you marry a daddy's girl, then you have to run along with her and work with her as the, she used to work with the father. Mm. Mm. I remember at one time our pastor's wife shared that she asked her husband, that you, you are the pastor, you are preaching this, but now you are not even what? Helping me. said, ah, I thought you you, you do everything. Mm. So, mommy's, daddy's girls create problems for themselves. Mm. Then it's mommy's apron string boy. <laughs> no, those you want. <laughs> Never yeah. must give it as apron yeah. string boy. <laughs> so for that, those ones, you need to understand him and then the mother, you understand be friends. The mother. Understand mm. the mother. Befriend the mother. Mm -hmm. mm. And in case of anything, if you discuss anything, let him know that you are going to talk to the mother before he talks to the mother. Hey. Hey. Go in between that relationship. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go in between that <laughs> relationship <laughs> and make sure it's you who talks to the mother. Hey. You say, hey, now we, we want to do this. I think I'll go and talk to our mom. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So instead of fighting their relationship, yeah, you just come in the middle and uh -huh. <laughs> come in the middle. Understand? Make sure you're not on the sidelines. No. Hey. You just just there in the middle. Say, hey, by the way, we want to do this. Have you told mommy about it? Mm. Uh, maybe maybe it should be me to go and tell her. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so the, there is that. Then another thing is are you going to marry a, a what? I call him what? A darling in mm. the family. Mm. Now, what does a darling mean <laughs> in this real sense? Uh, it's either a, a lady you are going to marry who is loved by, who is most loved in the family the by family. everyone, mm. or a man. Mm. Yeah, so when you marry a darling, it, so, it also poses a challenge. In fact, for me, I married a darling in the family. Mm. So, you cannot say any, you cannot complain about anything you cannot do anything whatever you do you are in the you are the one who in the wrong mm. for him he's always right, right. Mm. so you have to is he a darling mm. and if he's a darling then you have a lot of challenges with that person <laughs> how do how does someone with that mm. person deal? how do you deal with that darling yeah okay the first time before mm. i did it the wrong way Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, because I was blasting everyone left, right, and center. <laughs> <laughs> Assuring them. Yeah, I mm. would assure them I was so tough. <laughs> anyway, given my personality also, mm. I was very tough. I would argue, 
I would do all kinds of things. <laughs> but there is a better way to do it. Mm. With the darling in the family, the better way to do it is to offload on daily basis. Mm. Because he will hurt you. Those the in-laws will hurt you. So you offload. Mm. So by offloading, I mean every evening you get somewhere, you sit, you rewind the mm. daily activities. Then you say, I, uh, I accept or I admit that this happened. Mm. My, my husband did this. Then over my in-laws, when I, I did this, mm. I felt, then you admit, you describe the situation mm. as if you are describing to someone mm. of what happened. The important part of it is to bring out the feelings. Mm. I felt so bad. I felt so angry. I felt like fighting back. So after bringing out the feelings, speaking up about the feelings, then you choose, you say, I choose to forgive whoever mm. hurt you during mm. that day. Then after choosing to forgive, you pray for the desired scenario, what mm. you want to happen mm. yeah, on a daily basis. At first, it's very painful mm. because you acknowledge, you offer the daily, and they will hurt you the more. Again. <laughs> the more. Because mm. once you start acknowledging, it's like you've opened the Pandora box. Mm. They will hurt you the more. Do you, do you offload to them or in your quiet time? No, no, time no, no. In your quiet time, it's between mm. you and God. Mm. Yeah. But you make sure you speak out. You are bringing mm. it out because it, we are creative. Mm. So you add, you accept after accepting, choose to forgive. You bring out the feelings the way you really felt. Like mm. therapy, some sort of therapy. Uh -huh. It's a therapy. Mm. Then you choose to forgive. After forgiving, then you pray for the desired scenario. Mm. What you want to happen in that relationship. Mm. With the time, things will turn mm. out well. Mm. But you, you, in other words, you're saying that fire upon fire is not the approach necessary. <laughs> it's the worst. <laughs> because I went through that. <laughs> mm. yeah. It doesn't get you the, res the desired results. No. Mm. But now, Mama, don't you think you'll, f with that, can you find that you're condoning or you're, you're, you're encouraging, encouraging the habit? The habit. Since By you're what? Like, you're By not speak quiet you're speaking to God only, but you're not telling the other person that, you know, oh, my feelings were hurt here. I'm not happy with A, B, C, D. I don't know how God does it. Mm. But in way, At first, I used to talk. Mm. And things were becoming worse, worse. and worse. Mm. Then when I tried this uh, strategy, mm. I don't know how God works. The other guys, they soften. Mm. Yeah. Mm. As they say, they soften. I don't know what prayer. happens. The mm. Bible says but that they the heart soften. of the king is in the the heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. Yeah, mm. and yeah. he turns it wherever he wants. He wants. Yes, that's true. Mm. That's so. Mm. I don't know what happens, but I really see a big change mm. in my marriage. Very big. Mm. If my husband can wake up and do laundry, <laughs> <laughs> that was unheard of. <laughs> yeah. ah, it was unheard of. Even mm. in our culture. Mm. Mm. So just imagine that 43 years later, and you got you got born again along the way. Yeah, I got born again. You met Christ on your own without your husband's... Yeah, it was on my own. Mm. As I told you, I had a lot of challenges. I got to a point. I tried to go to the Protestant church, which was nearby, but I could not understand mm. what they were teaching. Mm. And I was confused. I got to a point of even trying to write a will myself. Eh? Mm. I wrote it. <laughs> then I said, now if I were to die today, which ones will bury me, the Protestants or the Muslims? Mm. So I wrote a will okay. eh, that if I die, bury me the Muslim way. Mm. Because now this one was not showing me the way. Mm. Mm. And that was the time when I met uh, my sister's friend. I had a friend. Mm. So her sisters mm. Mm. visited, so she would come. Now it, it was God is doing. The sisters also came to visit me. Mm. So the sisters asked me, oh, hey, Mommy Hilda, where do you go to church? I told them, ah, I used to go to St. John's, but I don't understand what they teach. Mm. Mm. Then they said, you know, you come and go with us to Watoto. It was KPC by In then. KPC, yeah. mm. So we made an appointment. Then on Sunday, when I felt stomachache, they came, I told them, ah, 
I'm not feeling well, I'm not going. They said, no, let's go, you'll get healed there. I told them, but I have not even bathed. They said, we shall wait for you. Mm. So they waited, for, it was supposed to be eight. They waited for me, I bathed, so we attended the 10 o'clock service. That was from August. Then I got saved in November. Mm. But before around August, that's when Morris Which settled. Which year? <laughs> 1993. Mm. Wow. Morris settled came that year in Uganda. I had a safety girl in, our, in the shop where I was doing business from. Mm. She would say, we are going to heaven. I would tell her, our lady does going to heaven. <laughs> we would urge you. Mm. So I had a, a nephew who was going to school, for, who was staying at our place. He was going to Maltec. Mm. So he told me about Maurice Cerro. Then that young lady also told me about Maurice Cerro. Mm. So when the, the day they started, we went with that lady. Mm. Whom we had in our shop, we got there. So when Maurice Cerro stood to minister, he raised his hand, God bless you. Ah, people screaming, falling down. And she told me, don't move near those who are falling down. Don't let them touch your body. Mm. I looked. I was amazed. Mm. So from that day, I attended the conference the whole week. Mm. For at least she would pass by the shop. But the fact that I was staying in Kamoch and the conference was in Makerere, I would go direct. People in the shop were shocked. They could not believe. Mm. So that was August. Then I got saved in November that same wow. year. Mm. Mm. So, Mama, maybe what I would want to know, what would you advise mm. a mommy's boy, or what you've called an apron string Mommy's apron boy. string yes. boy. <laughs> so there's someone watching, yes, there's a lady married to that person, and you've advised, but what do you advise that gentleman who is like that? Or even us as mothers, how should we raise our children to make sure that they are not like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as mothers... Uh, you should have a vision. What kind of young man do you want at the end of the day? Or has somebody's husband to be? Mm. What do you want him to be? Then you train him accordingly. So what you do? When he runs to you, tell him, hey, you have to learn to stand on your own. Mm. Yeah. You know, my son feels proud. He even told the wife, mommy, mommy made me make decisions at an early age. Mm. So... Is Given the man? challenge that I was going through, because since he's a, a darling in the family, mm. he listens more, he would listen more. Maybe, now, maybe nowadays he doesn't, he would listen more to, he, to his relatives. Mm. Because at one time he came and told me, hey, my aunt said this. I told him, your aunt is a failure in marriage. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just as I told you that I would blast her. <laughs> She's a failure in you marriage. You telling your son or your My husband. Uh, the husband. <laughs> She's a failure in marriage. She cannot advise us okay. <laughs> about marriage. Mm. So, <laughs> so what you do, you let this young man start, start standing on his own That's and making see. his own decisions. decisions. Mm. Mm. At a tender age, he mm. comes to you and say, hey, you look here. Tomorrow you'll be responsible for someone. Mm. You have to be there and make your own decisions. decisions. Yeah. I agree so with you, some of these aprons, mommy's apron string boys <laughs> grow up with their mommies. As for that one, and they mama. go through certain challenges <laughs> yeah, with mm. the mother. So the mother is so much attached mm. to the son. But despite the challenges you've gone through during your growing up time, mm. the mother should let go. So mm. I always tell people, because the moment you give birth, the, the moment you cut the umbilical cord, you are letting it go. Mm. So she, mothers should learn to let go at every stage. You let go, you let go. That by the time he marries, he does not come to you for other. He can come to you for counsel, mm. but you don't say, do this, do that, no. Mm -mm. Mm. Just to counsel him, let him make his own decisions. decision. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. As for the apron string boys <laughs> out there, <laughs> they should know that once, because the word of God says, so shall a man leave his father and mother, mm. be joined to his wife, wife yeah. and the two shall become one, one mm. flesh. Mm. So by 
running to your mother is like you are bringing her in between you. Yes. Mm. It says no one should part what yes, God yes, has yes. joined together. together. Mm. So he should not run to the mother. Let them grow up. Mm. Uh, but it's not easy because we are creative beings. He, he has been stuck to the mother. The neuro, they call them the neural pathways in the brain are there. So it's a big challenge. And it mm. will be a big fight for that one to come out of that. If so how does um, a woman who's married to that... The that apron <laughs> string boy. Apron string boy. <laughs> I think You're the wife of the... Come in between. Yeah, <laughs> you just come in between. Yeah, so what you do, you realize, eh, this one is mommy's apron string boy. Mm. How do I deal with this? You befriend the mother. Mm. You try your level best to become the friend of the mother. And when you are discussing with him, let him know that you want the mother to know to and know. to help you to, uh, to mm. decide. So join mm. their car group. <laughs> uh -huh. Join their group yeah. uh, mm. of the mummy's boy and the mummy. Uh -huh. mm. Okay, that is really powerful. So what are those things? Uh, of course, you see, I know you shared that uh, after your marriage, you said, you know what? No child will get married in this home that will go through the same things. What for you, from your experience, have you had to do to make it easy for your daughter, daughter-in-law and son-in-law, because you have both? What you, have you... You know, I nurtured my brothers-in-law. They grew up. So when I was saying that, by then I didn't even have a son. Mm. Mm. So I was looking at those who are going to get married to my brothers-in-law. Brothers mm. That's what I looked at because I used to tell him, no woman will marry here and work the way I've done. Mm. Mm. And I thank God so much. For them, they came in and they have not... In fact, none of them has done it. I even had one of my sister-in-laws complaining at one time. That eh, for you used to work, but these ones just comes. I want to warm my child's milk. She warms and goes back to work. <laughs> <laughs> and another thing I thank God for, now it's our sisters in law who work. Mm. When there's a function, when there's a over funeral, it's them who work. They mm. cook with it. They do what? Oh, so, the, 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 uh, the table's turned now. Uh, the table they own up their own home. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it has turned. I was looking at it and I said, eh, God How is really great. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we got mm. there. No, it's the, the so how the about work. your own in daughter's children? Yeah, in uh, law. Uh, oh, my own children? In law. Oh, I have Alinda. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one I have. Mm. And when she came, I, at least I learned from my mother. Mm. Because when our elder brother was going to marry, she sat us down and gave us a lecture. Mm. She said, you see, some people here, they treat their daughters-in-law like slaves. Mm. said, she's coming, she's married to your brother, not you. Mm. Yes. So you don't expect her to do everything for yeah. the rest of you. That's <laughs> powerful, that's powerful. Mm. That's, yeah. that's real. So, mm. she comes, and there we were. Mm. And I think I was her favorite friend, mm. her best friend. Mm. I, would fetch, I would do everything, fire, would fetch water, clean up, do everything. So when I married, that's what I had also expected. Mm. Mm. But at one time, uh, one of my sisters-in-law, I sent her. She had come to stay with us. She was, I think, between 9 and 12. I don't know exactly. Mm. That was 81, 9 and 12. So when I sent her, I said, hey, you are the woman. <laughs> you married in this home. You cannot send me. You know, I was shocked. I looked at the little girl who was telling me this. I told her, I'm going to beat you. I said, I'm, I'll report you to Stephen. That's the, the brother. Mm. Mm. So I said, eh, this is serious. So I kept quiet. Mm. Mm. Then the brother came after dinner. I said, uh-huh, nyabo. Reporting me, she re she kept quiet. So I told her, "I'm going to beat you <laughs> when your brother is even here." Mm. Though I didn't beat her, but that the really message. showed them they mm. sent the message and they took her away. Ah mm. mm. uh, yes, Mama. So I wanted to ask, how uh, how was your past relationship? Okay, your past 
I helped in your current now situation that you're in when you find you're dealing with your your in laws <laughs> not your in laws but now your daughter and your daughter in law and okay. has your own experience mm. shaped yeah my own experience has shaped it mm. Mm. because when I was growing up I'd see mothers in law mm. eh, struggling with their daughters in law so it has really helped and I no longer call them in laws, I call them in love. In love. It's my yes. daughter in <laughs> love. That's perfect. Because when I look at the Bible, they say the law kills. Mm. You know? So the law is for the disobedient. Mm. Yeah. That's and true. now love, because our God is love. Mm. So I call them in love. And I thank God so much. Yeah. My son in love and my daughter in love love me so <laughs> much. That's no doubt. So nice. Yeah, yes. they love me so much. So when I want anything, I just come here and say, hey, our mommy, I want this. Mm. And she does it for me. Mm. So good. Yeah. So, and another thing also, as mothers in law, mm. you don't just listen too much to what they tell you about your daughter in love. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, just look around. She's eating my son's money. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yes. I would hear those things. For mm. me, it was like, it's now if she does not eat your son's money, whom would you want to eat? Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's their money. It's our their money. money, not your yeah. son's money. Yes. Yes. So it's their money, and mm. they are free to eat it the way they, they want. want. So I'm That's really grateful. <laughs> it helped me. It mm. that the world just separates us, but we meet. Oh and... yes, by the way, they are neighbors, next yeah. door neighbors. <laughs> yeah. I, I really love that. I think mm. sometimes we allow st- people, people's, you know, gossip, Opinions rumors, and, and mm. all that to poison to poison our minds. Mm. And I think also sometimes the poison can even come from our own children. I'm thinking. Like, I'm sure there are some families where you find the person poisoning actually is the child. You know, there's someone who's sharing with me. Mm. No, the very, the, yeah, your the son mm. is the one who's saying negative things about the wife. And then and you, you also... don't defend, uh, you uh-huh. don't come in to put them together. Instead, you're breaking them apart. You say, mm. that woman of yours. Uh, what? Yeah. So there's someone actually who was sharing with me and she said the son, he was really a mommy's boy and they were living uh, in the same gate. And the boy would do funny things, and when they would complain, the boy would run to the mother and report. And then the mother would say, but you see the mistake that you made. So I'm I'm thinking also, what is the role of the mother? If your son comes to you and says, you know, my wife is like this, like this, like this, what is your role? Is it to, you know, side or it's to bring the, the two together? No, what I do first and foremost is to talk to him mm. and tell him that's your better half. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So go and sort out your issues. Mm. You cancel him. Mm. Yes. You mm. don't side with him. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And in case your daughter in love comes and says, oh, your son, this or that, you also cancel them. Mm. You handle each one the way they come. Mm. Mm. That's really powerful. I wanted also to ask, uh, after you got saved, how did your salvation story help in your relationship? Mm. Okay, my salv- by married. the time mm. I got saved, I had a lot of challenges. Mm. Mm. So what I did was, so when I got saved, I kept on going every conference, every what, lunch hour, go night, I mean <laughs> night, I went overnight, all, all, overnight okay. everything. Mm. Because whenever I would enter the building where we were fellowshipping, I would feel good. Mm. Whenever I got out, I would feel bad. Mm. So I said, hey, what is this? And you know, at that time I was doing business, I had a lot of money, but I did have peace. Mm. Mm. Because of the marriage? Uh, of course, with those uh, media crisis, mm. you know, you are struggle of marriage, children, mm. extended family, mm. ah, so many challenges. Mm. So I, 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 a time came, I said, hey, why is this like this? Mm. So I came to a point whereby I realized whenever I entered the building where we were fellowshipping, I felt good. Mm. Whenever I went out, I felt bad. Mm. Then it, it just hit me. It's like I used to come with my baggage of thoughts, leave it at the door, enter, feel good, come out, carry my bag. Your baggage yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> so that is the time when people came from UK. They trained us in self counseling. Mm. 
and that's where I learned off-roading. Mm. Yeah, owning up what has happened, uh, talking about my what, my feelings, choosing to forgive, and then praying for the preferred scenario. And it mm. gave you peace. It gave, at first, it was very hard because the more I off-roaded, the more I was hurt by those around me. Mm. I think it was just a test, mm. but I kept on going on, and mm. yeah. Mm. And also, the offloading is the self counseling. Yeah, it's yes. part of mm. self counseling. Mm. Okay, I also want to know. Uh, so there's another very interesting dynamic that comes in with uh, in law relationships, mm. uh, and many people are conflicted. You know, sometimes you want to do projects to develop the family, especially which include financial contribution. Mm. Do you think it is wise to put your money with in-laws? <laughs> 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 now, for you, is on both sides. You are, you, you are a daughter-in-law, but you're also a, a mother-in-law. Mm. In love. When is it not safe? <laughs> When, it, is it even always safe or what, what is your advice to someone who is caught up in the middle there? It depends. Mm. So first and foremost, you need to have a common strong bond mm. with the in-laws you want to do that mm. project with you. Mm. Mm. And then you write your guiding principles or core values which will really guide you yes. and you all agree on them. And mm. the most important part of it, you have to include the exit strategy <laughs> before you start. I love that. There mm. should be. Uh, as, a, as a lawyer, no, it's important. Yeah. Always mm. important. Termination before you start. Uh, yeah. <laughs> before you start. Mm. <laughs> so that you're not caught up in the middle. Uh -huh. So that you're not caught up in the middle. Mm. In case of anything, you pull you out. Get out. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Do you also think that there should be some legal like contracts? Yeah, mm, involved. They should be there mm. Mm. because you see nowadays what's happening around us. Mm. So they should be there. You start off, you negotiate, you negotiate, you go to the legal thing. Mm. Mm. Exit is strategy. Very like important. That. Very important. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah. that's for sure. Mm. Because sometimes you wake up and you caught up in there, yes. and you don't know how to pull out. You've already invested so much. Uh -huh. mm. And then it becomes World War. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the worst, the third World War. Uh, yes, at, uh, the one you don't want to go for. Yeah. In laws with it. But when there is a proper exit plan, yeah. you all follow that. Uh, we agreed when we part ways, uh -huh. each one will take mm. half, half, or 50 uh, 50. Oh, 50 50. 60 uh, 70. You have 40, your judgments, uh, you have your lawyers. Mm. 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 And then you also mentioned something earlier on, I think when you were sharing about your, your marriage, mm. your own experience as a daughter in law. You said that at some point, actually, because you're doing so much work, you even told them, you know what, for me, where I come from, we don't cook. No, Was we don't. I, I, do I, I said, I, I, I don't. Yes. We cook mm. Now, it got me thinking, and of course, because of that, they didn't make you be. <laughs> <laughs> and it got me thinking, and there are cases where you as the daughter in law okay god forbid or the son in law mm. as well you get married into a home i know at the start you say that we should look at the background mm. where we're married so you get married into this home where they also think that an in-law is a servant mm. isn't there a place for saying you know this is where i put my foot down this is where i draw the boundaries and when is the right time to even draw those boundaries so it's the husband to protect Mm. Mm. Why? That's true. Because for you, you come, you are like a drop of, and and a drop of in, water in a back in an ocean. Mm. Yes. you are just a drop. Mm. It is him to protect, protect you. you. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, you need in life. We need boundaries. Mm. Physical boundaries. Who touches you under other what circumstances? Yes. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. important. <laughs> Emotional boundaries. Mm. Yes. You have a right to your own. Emotions. emotions and mm. you can also stop the manipulating what mm. others and manipulate us with their emotions mm. Mm. that one you can avoid avoid then spiritual boundaries yes uh, I, knowing the difference between your will and god's will mm. you important. know those ones are very very important mm. Mm. so you need those then mental 
Mm. You have the right to your own thinking. Mm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. mm. That's to your own opinion. <laughs> your own opinion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no one should try to sway you. Mm. They need to understand you. Mm. Yeah. That is powerful. And I think some people struggle. Uh, you know, they've, we've been told that don't start things that you cannot finish. Yeah. True. I don't know what you think about that. Like if you're going into the marriage, don't start things and then... Halfway. Halfway, you can no longer maintain them. Keep eh? up. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> eh? It's <laughs> better you do what you always do. Yeah. Yeah. Now, like for me, when I go, go, go to there, I observed it's a large family. If it's me calling it Carlo, <laughs> you break. So I just told them, no. I, for me, I don't you know. But you are attending for us, you eat my talking. <laughs> so you should do things. You should not do things to impress people yes. because you are new. Mm. Yeah, I've come to this family now. How do I impress them? Be yourself. Mm. Do things you do up to the end. Mm. Mm. Know who you are. Very important. Yeah, yeah, know who you are and do things which you do to the end. Mm. Mm. And also when it comes to in-laws also, when it comes to giving gifts, the husband gives gifts to the yes. lady's yeah. side and the other one gives, gives to, to, to the to other the side. Yes. Yeah. Mm. So you have and to uh, when they come, like for us, they came to stay with us, there were so many, mm. but we did have guiding principles. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so when they come, give them, someone has come for a week, tell them your core values in the family. For us mm. here, we do like this. We, do we communicate before mm. you communicate coming before. at midnight. Mm. <laughs> Don't come the husband walking. communicates to people from his side and the wife communicates to people from her That's side. Yeah. side. Mm. It's only the gifts which is the other way around. Yes, yes. yes. Mm. So that wow. people will not just come somewhere. I come there and they say, hey, you know, I want this. No. Mm. They should they, know. Mm, they, they don't go direct to him mm. for anything. You can even make it clear, even your relative. If yes. anything, have, you tell her. Mm. Oh, so oh, the relatives should go. Oh, they, they, they should, should go, go through that. the wife. Hey. Hey. Yeah, mm. yeah that way it, it avoids this car. Back, back door, yeah. back uh -huh. <laughs> And mm. because even younger ladies from the wife who's side can come with the intentions their yes. own intentions yes. they are going direct mm -hmm. you know mm. through the way oh so people should go through your side or they should go to the to the opposite they go through the wife through the wife e everyone should go through the wife yes, yes. but Whether from the man's uh, side or from the woman's yes, side the yes. man has to make it clear they go through the wife the only difference yes the only difference you were saying that in case you're communicating, like let's say my people come at home, I'm the one to communicate uh -huh. to them that you are now the house, this is yes, what we do, this, this is the boundaries. Are this, yes, mm. please don't. Mm. When they are your people, you, you communicate. You communicate. Uh -huh. It's only the gifts now. For yeah. gifts, I give to your people and you gift give. my people. Uh -huh. But now, doesn't that also cause a conflict? So if they are going through me, mm. my worry is. Uh, for example, if people from my husband's side come to me and tell me, you know, we would like A, B, C, D, mm. and it's something I think we can't do. Mm. Now, the no's, should it, should it be my husband communicating the no's, or I and have to say no to them? No, if you can't do it, you communicate. You, you say I will then talk to him yeah. to communicate. Yeah. Yeah, you say, <laughs> the politics. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> you say, oh, we shall have a discussion. Oh, yeah, we shall have a discussion. And then he, he will bring the position. Mm. Then wow. he will just appear and say, I've, after having a discussion, <laughs> This my wife told me ABCD, uh -huh. but I think at this situation we cannot, mm -hmm. or we can, depending, wow. depending on who you're communicating to. Yeah. Mm. yeah wow. So That's powerful. Wisdom. That's good. Mm. But I like that. So do you also think that sometimes, you know, what are those things you tell to a daughter-in-law? Because I know a big number of our audience really is that daughters-in-law. Most of us have not become mothers-in-law yet. Mm. What do you advise us? What are mm. those things that you know? We, we might get wrong in this whole, where have we played that part? Like, where have we been the negative mm. energy in the whole relationship? What can we do better? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, with that one, I usually use a table of relationship. Mm. Now, like that one, this leg is what? Uh, love, mm. understanding, respect, then the other one is trust. Mm. Mm. So, 
the key part of it of that table understanding you said love understanding Story, respect, respect and trust, and trust. Mm. yeah but the most fragile fragile is trust mm. so you try your level best to understand mm. yeah don't come in because you've listened to so many things ah oksaga nazara osanga malaro business no mm. that's how to try to understand yes mm. don't listen to your agreements and i usually encourage people at least have friends you have those and under you the those younger, younger than, than you, you whom you can mentor then your agreements then those above you above you mm. older than you people and Titus talks that's... about it let older women you know uh -huh. cancel the younger ones yeah mm. cancel the younger ones so you don't it was it Rehoboam Solomon is his son mm. he let the advice of the elders and went with his what peers mm. Mm. and he blundered mm. mm. yeah so you have some elders and when they tell you please when they cancel you go think about it don't take it for sale mm. mm. because if you come to me it's like i've given you fish will you sell mm. Mm. no the bones with the bones <laughs> yeah <laughs> so sieve out and uh -huh, sieve out yes. yeah and choose what works for you because yeah we do things differently each family has its culture mm. yeah Wow, this uh, has been a very, very insightful topic. The best. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we really don't want to end this topic. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, so to, we have end to end it. it. So Mama, mm. we're going to let you give us parting shots. What is that one thing you feel you must say before we leave today? What is, is someone watching? What do you think you should A daughter-in-law, a son-in-law, a, son a, a mother-in-law, just a, anything, uh, parting say, shot. Mm. One commitment to the relationship. Yes. Mm. Each one has to be committed to that relationship. Mm. Mm. Then another one, understanding. Try your level best to understand the people in your what? In your relationship. Mm. And the last thing we should know that we are creative beings. Mm. We create. What you think, what you talk, what you do creates. Mm. Yeah, just as I've said that I was daddy's girl doing this and that and when I came here of course I created, I crippled my husband mm. so that he could not touch anything. So we are creative beings, mm. Mm. we create with our thoughts, our, our words and our actions. Mm. Mm. So whatever you say, whatever you do, be ready for the consequences. Yeah. Yeah. And last but not least, life is an assignment. Mm a trust and a test. So God brings people we think are difficult or are hard in our lives so that he can bring the best out of us. Yes. So this mother-in-law, daughter-in-law relationship, just mm. know that God is trying to God is trying to bring the best out of you. Refining you. Mm. Yeah, he's refining you. Mm. Mm. Wow, this has been really, really <laughs> brilliant. Thank you so much, Mama. You have blessed us. So much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your wisdom. If you have any questions, do share them in the comment section. We will be sure to answer them. We will make sure that uh, you know her, she mm. puts her input. If yeah. you want her back on the show, please do let us know. <laughs> yes. And uh, by the way, not forgetting. Like we need her again. Yes, not forgetting Mama is also a counselor. She counsels couples. Yes. So if you're out there, you have, you're have you struggling, you are in happiness because, I mean, we need counseling. Constant reminder. Yes. yes. So, so. We, we shall, you can get in touch with us. We'll give you her contact. You meet her. Mm. She gives you some yeah. dose of wisdom <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much uh mama thank you for joining us ladies and gentlemen we have come to the end of this episode do share this episode you don't know who might need it who might yeah. need encouragement from it till next time much love from us bye bye, bye. <laughs> thank you Turn off this love. i am yours you are mine the only thing that matters now we are the ecumus.